So in this video today, we are going to be talking about dividend investing. And in particular, we're going to identify the number one biggest mistake that dividend investors make at a time like this and how you can potentially avoid making this mistake yourself. So in the last couple of weeks, we have seen some massive companies out there cutting or suspending their dividends. And in particular, we saw Ford suspending their quarterly dividend back on March 19th. We saw that Boeing has suspended their quarterly dividend as well as their repurchasing of shares while they seek a bailout from the federal government. We also saw department stores like Macy's and Nordstrom suspending their dividend payments as well. AT&T is a very popular dividend stock that people buy and we heard from them and they said they are suspending their share buyback program as a move to protect their dividend. Delta Airlines also announced the suspension of their dividend on March 20th. Marriott, the massive hotel chain, has also suspended their dividend, and Darden Restaurants, the owner of restaurant brands like Olive Garden, has also suspended their quarterly dividend. Now, I'm sure there will be many more companies to add to this list as far as companies that have had to cut or suspend their dividends or share buybacks as a result of the economic crisis. So what exactly does this mean for dividend investors like myself? This means that dividend safety is at risk right now. And if you're not careful, you may be about to make the number one dividend investing mistake yourself. Now, as a beginner to dividend investing, it's important to understand what exactly the dividend is before we talk about determining safe versus unsafe dividends. A dividend is simply a way that a large company shares a portion of their earnings with shareholders. And essentially what they are doing is taking some of those earnings and sending in most cases a quarterly payment to shareholders. Now there's another way that companies often reward shareholders and that is through a share buyback. That is when a company buys shares of the stock off the market, which essentially dries up some of that supply, increasing the demand for that stock, and thus increasing the share price. Now, during times of economic prosperity, companies tend to increase these dividend payments over time, as well as increase share buybacks when they have extra cash to deploy. But right now, many of the companies that I listed that have cut dividends are in financial hardship right now. So as a result, drastic action had to be taken related to the dividends that they were paying. And with some of these companies, having to cut the dividend is a result of spending too much money in the recent years on share buybacks. If you look at the airline industry in a whole that is going to be bailed out now, they spent billions of dollars on share buybacks over the last decade, which could have been money they had on the sidelines in cash in case something like this were to happen. And the reason why you see large companies investing money in the share repurchasing is because most CEOs and upper management members of a company have some type of stock-based compensation. So it is in their own best interest for the price of that stock to climb higher since they will make more money as a result when they eventually sell shares. So as a result of the current economic conditions and in some cases irresponsible share repurchasing, we are seeing some massive companies that have to cut or in some cases eliminate their dividends entirely, which of course begs the question, how can you tell if a dividend stock is safe or not? And in order to determine the safety of a dividend stock, you essentially have to look at how much a company is paying in dividends per share versus how much a company is earning per share. So for example, let's take a look at AT&T. We already heard from them and they said they're going to have to suspend share repurchasing as a move to protect the dividend. So if we look at AT&T here, in fiscal year 2019, AT&T earned $1.89 per share, while on the other hand, they paid 
$2.05 per share in dividends. And it doesn't take a mathematician to determine that this dividend is not sustainable based on the current company earnings. Now, does that mean this company is going to cut the dividend tomorrow? No, they may not cut the dividend at all, but they are in a position right now where they can't afford the current dividend that they are paying. And companies that have paid dividends for a long time try to avoid cutting dividends at all costs. They will take other drastic measures before cutting dividends because they know that as soon as they cut the dividend, investors are going to exit the stock and the stock is going to tank. So you'll see companies like AT&T suspending their share repurchasing or making other moves to free up cash to continue paying that dividend. And of course, the hope is that Future earnings for this company will allow them to build up a cash surplus again, allowing them to sustain this dividend going forward. So on the surface, looking at a stock like AT&T, seeing a dividend yield of around 7%, is very appealing. But when you look into it a little bit deeper and look at the earnings the company has versus the dividends they are paying, it doesn't look like a very safe dividend in the current market conditions. And it's also important to remember that this was before the crisis started with the virus. And if the company couldn't afford their dividend in 2019, which was overall a very good year, it doesn't look very good going forward. Now the good news is you don't have to look into the earnings of every single company and do this yourself. You can look at a simple ratio called the payout ratio, which will give you an idea of the overall safety of a dividend stock. And a payout ratio below 100% means the company is paying less in dividends than they are earning. If the ratio is equal to 100%, every dollar of earnings is being paid to shareholders in the form of dividends. And if the payout ratio is above 100%, that means that this company is paying more money in dividends than they are currently earning. Now, as far as a safe dividend payout ratio, you're going to hear different opinions about this, but a dividend payout ratio in the range of 50 to 75% is generally acceptable. And again, just because a company has a payout ratio above 100%, that does not mean they are going to cut dividends immediately. But if they are unable to free up cash or increase earnings, that dividend may be at risk. So based on looking at the payout ratio, which you can look at on a number of free online sources, I personally like Yahoo Finance, you can see that a number of dividend stocks out there that are popular among investors are currently unsustainable. And again, the scary part is this is before the virus has had its effect on corporate earnings, which we aren't going to see until quarter one and quarter two of 2020. So a couple of examples here, guys. AT&T is currently paying out 108% of earnings in the form of dividends. Next up, ExxonMobil is currently paying out 102% of their earnings in the form of dividends. And one that is very high on this list is a retailer, Abercrombie & Fitch, currently paying out 133% of their earnings in the form of dividend payments to shareholders. So based on what we're seeing right there, these dividends are at risk if the company is unable to improve their financial situation. And so the number one dividend investing mistake that people make is solely looking at the dividend yield when investing in a stock. If you were looking at stocks like Ford with a dividend above 10% and you solely looked at that dividend yield and you bought shares of that stock, well, you got caught in a nasty trap here because Ford cut the dividend to zero. They suspended it altogether. Now, that's not necessarily a problem if you want to hold that stock long term, but if you were solely buying that stock because of a high dividend yield and then they cut that dividend, you could be stuck bag holding that stock or you would have to sell it for a loss because after a company cuts or suspends the dividend, the stock almost always goes into a free fall. And there's a name for this guys, it's called the dividend yield trap. It's very common for investors to fall for this trap. And essentially what you have to do is not only look at the dividend yield, but also look at that dividend payout ratio over the last couple of years to see if that dividend is sustainable based on current company earnings. 
Now, in particular, based on the current economic conditions, these are the industries that I would personally be careful of solely looking at dividend safety. I would say airlines, hotels, cruise lines, casinos, restaurants, oil and energy stocks, retail, shipping and freight, industrials, manufacturing, and automakers. Based on the current economic conditions, these industries are likely going to be hit the hardest, which puts their dividend safety at risk. Now, I'm not saying these are bad industries to invest in. In fact, there may be some great buying opportunities within these different industries. In fact, those of you who follow my series on building a dividend stock portfolio, if you don't already, I'll put a card up in the corner for you guys. But I have purchased stock in Boeing as well as Delta Airlines, and both of those stocks have suspended their dividends. Now, I'm not really concerned because in my opinion, I feel there is a lot of money to be made in asset appreciation by selling that stock down the road for a higher price or waiting for that company to hopefully begin paying dividends again in the future. But if you're solely looking at dividend stocks from the standpoint of earning safe dividends for passive income or earning compound interest by reinvesting them, you have to look at the safety of that dividend before investing and pay attention to those industries that I mentioned as dividend safety is likely at risk for these companies. And if you do own one of these stocks that had a dividend cut or a dividend suspension, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go out and sell that stock. Essentially what it means is you should take a step back, look at the company overall, understand what they are currently going through and decide whether or not you still want to be a part owner of that company. If the answer is yes, you might as well hold on to it and see what happens. But if you disagree with where the company is heading, it may be time to cut your losses if you did in fact end up in the situation. Now this happened to me a couple of years ago when I bought into shares of General Electric back in 2017. The dividend yield was attractive and the stock was going down and down. So I dumped a bunch of money into this stock only to find that they cut their dividend down to one penny per share and I had to take a step back and evaluate. Now after the new CEO came into that company, I liked him and I liked what he had done with previous companies, so I decided to hold on to it to see what happened. But if that company was going in a direction I disagreed with, that is a situation where you might decide to cut your losses and move that money elsewhere. But obviously it's best to avoid that situation altogether if possible by looking at dividend safety and paying attention to that payout ratio over a long period of time rather than solely looking at the dividend yield. So what are some safe dividend stocks right now? Well, that is probably a topic for a different video. And if you guys want to see me doing a video on safe dividend stocks right now, go ahead and drop a like on this video. And if a lot of people want to see that, I will put that video together for you. But in the meantime, I just did a video on the 10 dividend stocks that have paid and grown their dividends the longest, referred to as dividend aristocrats. I'll put that card up in the corner. You guys can check that video out. These are 10 companies that have paid and grown their dividends for 50 years or more. And in general, the dividend aristocrats, which are companies that have paid and grown dividends for 25 years or more, are a good place to start. And there's about 60 different companies on that list. There's also a great blog I recommend called Simply Safe Dividends, and this is not any kind of affiliation or partnership. I just think it's a really good resource that I tend to go to when doing research about dividend stocks. So I'll link up to that down in the description below. So anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you do not end up in a situation where you fall for a dividend yield trap. And if you did, it may be time to take a step back and evaluate the company that you own. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section below. And the last thing I want to mention real quick, guys, is if you are interested in getting those two free stocks from Webull just for signing up and funding the account, that promotion ends tomorrow. So you have just just one day left to take advantage of that if you want to get your two free stocks. That's going to be the top link down in the description below. But thank you so much for watching guys. Subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video.